can you imagine? Yeah. If if you started a YouTube channel, all you did is is uh, reviewed Doom levels, and you called yourself Johnny Wad. See, I like jokes like that because like almost nobody would get the joke, right? <laughs> and then like every once in a while, you'd get somebody leaving a comment who knew exactly what you were doing, and it would just make your day, you know? <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, when I was uh, in high school, I mean, this is... Because you would... Before we started recording, you had mentioned that the first porno that you'd ever seen was called The Adventures of Johnny Watt. Yeah, when I was 10 years old. I think that's an important... That, I mean, that's, like, that's pretty early to see your first porno. Didn't I, I thought I told you that story already. I, did I not? No. That was like, so my parents were out of town. It was my dad and my stepmom. I don't think my mom watched porn, although, you know, hey, there's nothing wrong with doing that. But um, they were out of town for the weekend and I was just like looking for a movie to watch. Like we had a, we had, you know, a VCR. I mean, who didn't have a VCR? Right. And so like, yeah. Um, I knew that there was a box out in the garage of like more tapes, you know, like there was other tapes yeah, yeah. out there. The, the box, the old, uh, box of porn. But that's the thing. It wasn't a box of porn. It was just a box of VHS tapes. Which was, I mean, in and itself, though, it contains porno VHS tapes. Well, that might have been the only one, though. I'm not sure. But um, but so there's this movie in there, and it was called The Adventures of Johnny Wad. And, like, I'm 10 years old, right? So, like, if you were 10 and you saw that, you would, I mean, what's going through your head? Like, to me, it's like, oh, it's probably, you know, some medieval knight kind of adventure movie. Like, I don't know. Or, like... Like uh, Commando or something like that. It's got to be something like maybe, you know, like some guy who has a lot of guns and just right. Like... And so then, like, I put it in, and you know, it was a hardcore porno movie, and that that's how I saw it. But my first porno was a hundred percent by accident, and uh, <laughs> I just remember. I know I've told this story before somewhere, but uh, but like I ended up watching it, and then I I remember. Well, I didn't watch the whole thing. I mean, I, was just, I saw what it was. And I like ran to the phone and called my my best friend Sean. And I'm like, dude, you got to get. It was like summer vacation, you know. I'm just like, dude, you yeah. got to get over here. You got to see this. Yeah. And um, I ain't seen anything like this ever. And so then, before. like, he comes over and we're watching it. And uh, I mean, in case anybody's wondering, like, how how was I home alone at ten years old and my parents were out of town? Is like they they had like That's a person that they work. hired to. Uh, uh, Cause like I had, my sister was just like a Check baby, in on you. so like we had like a like a nanny that yeah. like lived with us part time, because it was cheaper mm -hmm. than you know yeah, childcare, yeah. and yeah. Um, look at that horrible cat behind me. <laughs> <laughs> She's so bad. Um, anyway, so she was there. Like they, oh, can you can we pay you to stay over the weekend because we're going out of town? And so like she was she was there, but you know she was off doing her own thing or whatever. And, um, so my friend and I are watching this movie and then we hear her coming. And so like, we really quick turn off the movie and turn off the TV and make like, we're not doing nothing at all, you know? And then I just remember like, and by doing that, it makes you feel like it makes it obvious that you were doing something. Right. And right. she also, she had her own kids. So like, you know, she knew what time it was. And so I just remember yeah. like, you know, she saw that obviously we were doing something we weren't supposed to be doing. And so she comes in the room and turns the TV back on and hits play on the VCR <laughs> And sees what we were watching, and it's, it's funny because this is like burned into my brain. Is I just remember she just went, "Oh, Senor Chris," <laughs> and that was it. Yeah, that was the yeah. And I don't exchange. think she ever told my parents, and I obviously never told my parents. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Hey, anyway, before we go any further, I got to finish turning the lights on, and I got to get. Uh, uh, Dora the Explorer out of here, so yeah. give me a second. Okay. <laughs> you know what I say when you're gonna you're gonna kick her out? Yeah. You're gonna kick her out. I always say, "Go on, get." Yeah, she's getting yeeted. <laughs> You gotta keep one and you do Pick one that's loud 
Yes. So clearly, uh, she got yeeted, and my uh, my um, my cat got yeeted because she was just like wouldn't leave me alone. Uh, if my dog came down here, would she would she stay? I don't know. Or do we just yeet all three? I don't know. I mean, I really hope we get to a point with her. My cat, your, not your dog. I don't care about your dog, but um, yeah. no offense. Uh, or she can hang out down here more, you know? I mean, she's only two. Yeah. So I think that's part of the problem is that she just still yeah. has too much energy. That's Nellie's problem, too. But She's only two. Because, like, sometimes, I mean, like, when I made that, um, I think it was the Madden video that I made, the last weekend rental, mm-hmm. like, she was sleeping uh, between my feet. Because oh. it was the time of day where yeah, uh, that's what she did, you know, and so it wasn't a big deal. But, like, right now it's too early in the morning, so not that it's early, but I'm saying it's before her nap time. Yeah. So, um, ah, there we go. Uh, so she has too much energy, so she, as you saw, she's trying to scale the arcade cabinet. To what end, I don't even want to know. I mean, can you imagine just being like, that's there all the time. And like, this is the exact moment where she's like, oh, no, dude. Oh my gosh, no, dude. what's this? That's every day. Like every day she comes down here, it's like she's, she's never. Like, what's going on with this now? It's like she's never been down here before. She's like, oh. Yeah, oh, the, fir- the first time. What's that? I mean, it's I like taking go. my dog on a walk. We go, we always walk to the same places. And every day it's like, she's like, oh my God. Like, wh- I can't believe what we're doing right now. It's mind blowing. And. Really, she only she likes going on a walk because she just wants to see who we're gonna run into. Sure, because she's like, who? Like, who? I don't want to hang out with my parents. I want to. I want to see who else I can meet. Well, yeah, you're. I mean, you're yeah. boring, right? I mean, yeah. And what she'll do is, if we're walking and and she like looks behind us and she sees someone like kind of at a distance, like walking the same way. She will like stop and then she'll like lay down and be like, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna stay here until they catch up. Yeah. Because I want them to acknowledge me. Wow. Just see me, say hi. What a, uh, uh, don't the kids call that a pick me? I think your dog's being a pick me. Oh, really? Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. I've never heard, I've never heard that term before. Like, I think when you're being like an attention whore, you're being a pick me. Yeah. Well, that's like literally what she does is she's just like, I wanna, I wanna see how this person reacts to me. Yeah. Because I know that I'm, Super cute, yeah. Uh, so yes, you know, <laughs> and she's like, I just she's got a new haircut. Oh, so well, she's like, I want, that. I want, I want everyone to see see my new haircut. So you know, I've got my list. Uh, you know, I haven't, I haven't edited the last show yet, but you know, I have my, I always make like a little bullet point list of what we talked about, and then sometimes I can't mm-hmm. remember. Like I'm trying to give myself little words that are like, I don't know, like memory triggers or something. Yeah, and yeah. the last thing I wrote was reboot. Does that even mean anything? Reboot like that show with the what? Like the CG animated show that I never watched because I wasn't like young enough at the time. Oh no! You know what it was? It was when you were trying to get me to watch uh, Jay and Silent Bob reboot. That's what it was. Oh right, okay. Never mind. There it okay, is. so uh, we had decided. Well, you had decided unilaterally, by the way, which I don't really appreciate, but that's fine. Uh, that we were going to do uh, an email episode today. Yeah, oh, so, I mean, I just, I'm just I, I, no, I'm, I'm you know, I said, I'm just breaking your balls a little bit. Do you think Calm we down. could? Do I? Did I say? Can we do it? Do I, what? I asked. Yeah, I said, yeah, it's fine. I said, so why don't we do an all email? Yeah, I was just, jo- I'm just joking. Today. Can you please stop? <laughs> but uh, actually, this has nothing to do with the rest of the show. But it's just like um, there's this question I've been dying to ask you for a long time, and for some okay. reason, whenever we start the show, it, I always forget, and every time I'm just like, damn it, I forgot again. So if you don't mind before we get started. Um, yeah. Let's, was, yeah. Let's do it. So it's just, I'm, I'm just dying of curiosity. Like, what would you say is your all-time favorite Creed song? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway. Uh, I mean, I want to say... Uh, 
That's not a serious question. You don't have to answer it. Oh, I, oh, I know. But I'm like trying the thing to get is, you like, all keyed nah, up meant, and then and then give you that. You and know? it's like it's not like I am. I am. I like I. I feel that I've always made fun of Creed. My friends and I always made fun of Creed. So, oh, I didn't even know. But that. like when I think of Creed, yeah, I think of like certain situations where it's been used effectively. And a long time ago, uh, there was this movie that came out called Titan A.E. It was like a Don Bluth movie, like animated movie, but it had like CG elements. Yeah. And there was a trailer for it. Uh, and it used used Creed's hire yeah. in it. And I'm like, oh, it, like it works here. Like it's it's. You know, because it's like the Earth gets blown up, and all humans are like spread out in space. Well, they definitely got hired. And <laughs> exactly, yeah. uh, but now, like more re- recently, uh, you know, I've there's sometimes you'll see these um, uh, these videos like on like Instagram, like on the reels or something like that, and it's like this shot of this sunflower. In a rainstorm, and it's like, uh, like strapped to the railing of a, um, like a, on a porch. Yeah. And someone has done this thing where they, um, put like an eyes and mouth on it. Uh huh. And it's like singing, it's like singing the, <laughs> the uh, the, a, a Creed song when it's like getting blown in the wind. Yeah. And I don't know what it's called. It's like, you know, I'm six feet. Away from the edge, and six feet doesn't seem so far down. I don't uh, know what the name not, of the song. It's not ringing a bell. But it is like real. It's it's really really funny. Yeah. Uh, and it's one of those <laughs> things that is exponentially more funny when you are not entirely sober. Sure. And I like had to go around and like show everybody in my family. Yeah. And everyone's like, "Oh, it's great." <laughs> but I I watched it like multiple times, and if I'm scrolling through and it comes up again, yeah. Like I will watch it like like a dozen more times. Yeah. Uh so do those qualify as my favorite all-time Creed songs? Definitely. That's a lot uh, in, more in of those an answer instances. than I thought I was going to get. So that's pretty good. <laughs> but uh yeah. Do you ever hear that old story? Like there was a big story, I maybe it was on Reddit like years ago about Scott Stapp. Like I don't know why I know the lead singer for Creed's. I don't name. either, but if you had asked me, I would have known as well. So I'm um, we're in the same boat. Oh, so you know his name is Scott yeah, Stapp. And I don't know why I know that. Oh. But <laughs> well, there's like a thing, uh, like a recounting of like someone like ran into him uh, at like a Denny's and he was like super drunk and like they hung out with him like all all night. And he like like tried to like sleep with one of the girls in the group or something like that. Hmm. That was a long time ago. See, I thought I like, oh, he that. sounds like a cool guy until the last part. I was like, OK, never, never mind. <laughs> yeah. And in, in the recounting of it, they never referred to him as as Scott Stapp. They called him. Is call him Creed. Yeah. yeah. You know, like like Apollo Creed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know when that might because my in own my prison, opinion. like that was their first song. I thought that was a pretty good song. I at the time, you know. Yeah. But and then high I mean you higher's got, got some cool like guitar again. licks in it, I'm not gonna lie, you know, but uh Ex- exactly. Like you know, that's but if you watch that trailer, it's like, oh it's, it it works here. Yeah. Like it's pretty it it, it works uh with the uh, with the narrative of the trailer. Yeah. I mean, I think for me, I just didn't like, you know, like they're trying to be sort of like mainstream, like sort of Christian, Christian rock, adjacent, right? at least like, you know, alternative yeah. rock. But mm-hmm. then like, you know, it seems pretty obvious that that's all just grift based on, you know, yeah. s- you know, uh, Scott Stapp's character issues, shall we say. And yes. that's what. So it's yeah, like, oh, you're just like, doing that to try to carve out your own little niche and make money um, well the whole thing i remember hearing something about how like he was like doing a concert or something like that, or they were doing a music video and he like insisted on like more christ-like poses for himself yeah he's like i he, i want he wanted to do christ-like poses well he's trying like, to throughout you know, he's trying to play to what he wants his audience to be so you know yeah hey uh before we get started with the emails and whatnot i, I had a revelation this morning and that doesn't at my age mm. it doesn't happen very often uh so last time on the show, we were talking about, you know, uh, AVGN and Nostalgia Critic and, you know, mm-hmm. then the fact that they use, you know, whether it's songs or movies or whatever, they use, you know, 
dumping on them as a way to sort of like that's their shtick, right? And yeah. um, and I had noticed like just I don't know why I follow <laughs> Rick Beato on on Instagram. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I'm not going to lie and say I never watch his show. I, I think I've kind of grown tired of him, but like there was a time where you know I. He's done quite a few videos that I would say I think are good. You know, like, you know, he does like, yeah. you know, top 10 and he, bass you know, intros you know, or re- something. Like, really, those are cool. You know, he knows his stuff. hundred percent. Like, I, I don't, I don't, I don't watch him like really at all. And I, I think that I only knew of him because of Pat Finnerty. Like, that's Oh, see, no, I, I already discovered. knew who he was. I don't, right. I think probably watching him is how Pat Finnerty ended up in my YouTube recommends. I'm guessing. Right. And that would make sense. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so he was, you know, he had like an Instagram post. I don't know. It's funny to me because like, you know, he has like 2 million subscribers on YouTube and, you know, he has tons yeah. of, you know, he's super successful in that way. But then for some reason, he still feels the need to like acknowledge it. Like on Instagram, like, oh, I, I got, you know, one of my videos is like in the top 10 trending on YouTube or I just passed a million Instagram followers. And like, to me, I feel like at some point it's like, you know, Act like you've been there before, I guess. I don't really know. You know, like I remember I yeah. kind of made a big deal about it when my channel passed like 10,000 subscribers, but yeah. not when it passed 100,000 because like it's at too. some point it's like, dude, like, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, there, there, it's, I mean, anyway, like I could like a million. Yeah. If you do a million, yes. you know, like that's, on YouTube, like that's you, rarefied that's air. Yes. Yeah. And then like you just you should never talk about it again. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, like I said, I, like, I don't think I acknowledged when I got a... I think I just hung the thing on the wall, and then that was kind of it, I think. I don't recall doing anything, but... Like, I can't stand it when people, like, like on Twitter profiles and stuff, when they link to their YouTube and they say, oh, I've got this many subscribers, like, yeah. in, the, in their profile. That's Well, I mean... I don't but really want to like, get I can in the understand business it's like of, over like... Over so-and-so many. But when you say, like, the, like, well, you know, like... I, I, get it. I don't. Like, I don't. I don't think it's necessary. I don't want to start dumping on other YouTubers, but I will say that when your Twitter profile has your number of YouTube subscribers and an email for "quote unquote" biz inquiries, your your <laughs> kind of your slip is showing. You know, like yeah. I see why you're doing. I see what your primary motivation is, which is like that's fine, yes. but then don't pretend it's something else. Anyway, that wasn't even the point of any of what I was saying. Uh, but so. My point was just so he had posted on Instagram like like oh my my latest video is number eight on YouTube trending which you know good for him but uh, the thing is that what the video is about is uh, it's him looking at the top ten songs on Spotify you know like this week or this month and right. then like just dumping all over them <sighs> and it just made me think it's like okay so basically Rick Beato well, be is like angry that. video game nerd. For like middle-aged guys, yeah, yeah, guys with white hair, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I that I mean that that seems uh, I don't, like I don't want to say it's like it's I don't know it just it seems unnecessary. Like I feel like if that's not the thing that he's like popular for is like yeah it's not crapping on things. Yeah. Like it's just it it comes off as bad. Like it's just a bad look. I mean, especially when you know, like their whole like their whole thing. Other than that, has been like, like this is cool. Yes. You know, like celebrating yeah. certain things, and when you're just doing that, it just feels cheap. I I mean I agree, but although it's not the first time he's done this, but I would say that if you watch, if you watch his videos even semi regularly, I feel like it's a thread that runs through his show. That he thinks that like modern music sucks for the most part, you know, like it's kind of well, a kind of boomer attitude. And I mean, even if you think that's true, you know, if you're going to make your show about like what makes this song great or what makes that song great or top 10 acoustic guitar intros of all time, then just do that. Like focus on the positive. Yeah. You know, like do I. Right. I don't feel like I dump on things on my show. I mean, if I have to say if I'm doing a magazine read or anything, a game sucks, then I'll kind of say that. But. Then I'd rather just move on. The conversation. Like, I don't care for this game or whatever, and let's turn the page and see what's on. Hopefully, there's something better on page 29, right? You know, or whatever. Yeah, and you know, we like we've talked about we talked about it yesterday about like that that negative attitude 
Uh, and I feel as though in the last few years, like that's really taken a backseat. Like there's been a counterculture to that. Yeah. That has really cropped up. And we were, we are, we are part of that counterculture that is, you know, like looked at the, the cool stuff, you know, like even bad things. Yeah. Have cool stuff about them or interesting aspects to them. Well, I mean, that's it's just like, let's say if I was going to make a video about like the 3DO, for example, right? Somebody could very easily make a video like why the 3DO sucks or why the 3DO is a failure. But like if I was going to make a video about the 3DO, it'd be like showcasing the 3DO and like, well, here's some stuff that was actually yeah. like, I guarantee you if I'd had a 3DO back in the 90s, I would have thought it was pretty cool. Probably the same thing to yeah. a lesser extent, probably the same thing with the Jaguar. Yes. I mean, I remember the first time and I told that story before too, but you know, I remember the first time I saw a Jaguar, it was running uh, the Cybermorph, you know, the pack in game. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was at like an electronic store. It was called The Good Guys, but I think that's like a West Coast thing and they're not even around anymore anyway. But I remember just sitting there playing through Cybermorph at the demo kiosk and like I thought it was pretty cool. So yeah. people make fun of it now though. Oh, the game sucks so bad. Which no, no it doesn't, <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, uh, so really. What? Uh, <laughs> I mean, were you done? Yes. Okay. I just wanted to mention the something I didn't talk about the uh, the Midwest Gaming Classic. Oh, all right. Uh, so there was a, a guy who um, set up this whole like area. Um, he had a, like accumulated all this stuff from uh, various like retail outlets, and he set up this area like it was a Sears in 1995. And he had all the demo kiosks and all this other stuff. Wow. And it was, like, crazy good. And he has this book coming out. Uh, it's called, like, the like the World of Nintendo or something like that. And it just, like, has all these really super rare photographs of, you know, retail standees and stuff. And uh, I took a bunch of footage. I'll have to show it to you because um, even though, like, I didn't really go to Sears that much, you know, like, it was cool because they had a Super NES kiosk set up and I was playing Yoshi's Island, which is like the only like real memory I have of going to Sears and playing a demo kiosk and seeing Yoshi's Island. Uh, but like Tri was like freaking out. He was like, Oh my God. It's like, I, this is like bringing back so many memories in here. It's like so close. He's like, I have goosebumps right now. <laughs> wow. That's pretty cool. <laughs> so I got my, uh, yeah, the, I got my PlayStation, my PS one. I got that at Sears. Oh really? Yeah. I mean, that's. Uh, I mean, I assume so. that's a normal place to get it. Well, they just had you know I it was mean, like Sears Funtronics. Like sometimes you'd see their ads in like mm. like '90s era, like PSM. Like I remember they had an ad for uh, like Final Fantasy VII. Like if you yeah. took a coupon in there, you got it for ten bucks off, and you got a free T-shirt. But uh, oh wow, I had I had, I had a the- Sears card at the time. Mm-hmm. So I bought several games from. Did you get Did you get the T shirt? No, because I I didn't get because uh, I already had Final Fantasy VII because I bought oh, okay. that. It was an issue. It was like issue number one of PSM. But I literally bought that issue because Final Fantasy VII was the cover story and it had like a, a walkthrough in it. I see. And so then I saw oh, I could have gotten ten dollars off on a T shirt, but uh, no, I bought my copy of Final Fantasy VII at uh, Software Etc. in the mall. Oh, okay. I got mine at Electronics Boutique. That's like one of the few like game launches I remember specifically getting it like that day. Um, you know, it, it, I had it pre-ordered, obviously, and um, I went after school and got it. Or after I was, it was my first year of college, actually. My, it was it was the end of my second week of that of college, and I remember getting it. And I wanted to go home and play it so bad, and I had to sit through uh, English, like English 101 or whatever. Yeah. And it was like the worst, like English class I can ever remember being in. And th- this is coming from somebody who uh, I, I was a like a like a English and in, in social studies brained person versus a math and science person so i like i liked english and social studies more like in school but you liked final fantasy 7 more than either i i like final yeah. fantasy 7 more than uh than uh dan callahan's uh english 101 class at jamestown community college <laughs> it's understandable <laughs> uh i didn't get it i mean i didn't 
The first game I pre-ordered was actually Final Fantasy uh, X. I don't think I was really aware of the idea of pre-ordering games before that. Mm-hmm. For me, it was just like that was not like Final Fantasy VII was not a game that was on my radar at all. Uh, right. Just because I was playing more just like action games and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And I was a friend of mine was the one he was kind of harassing me to buy it because he had he had an N64, but I had a PlayStation. And he's the one that told me, he's like, oh, this game either is coming out or just came out. You got to get it and whatever. He must have said the right things to me or whatever because I ended up going over to software, et cetera, and getting the game. And I was sure glad that I did. Uh, and it, it did it change, like, your perspective on games? I mean, it was the, the first Japanese-style role-playing game that I ever got into. So it got me in. Okay. Like, it turned me so into a did. Final Fantasy, you know, fanboy or whatever. Like, I mm-hmm. had Final Fantasy on the NES. But I think I bought right. it used and had no manual, and so I just didn't understand what anything even was. You know, like right. what's what's a potion? What's a, well, it's, what's it's a hard phoenix to understand, down? Especially and um, since you were like so young too, it's kind of like me with Fantasy Star. I didn't understand it at all. Yeah, and so I never really got into it. And then, of course, I didn't have a Super Nintendo, so I never played Final Fantasy two II or three. Mm-hmm. But playing Final Fantasy seven, that made me go back and play the older Final Fantasy games. And then, you know, like yeah. when Final Fantasy VIII came out, I bought that. When Final Fantasy IX came out, I bought that too. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, after that I lost. Like I bought, like I just said, I bought Final Fantasy X pre-order, but I, right. I really didn't care for that game, so I didn't even get that far in it. Uh, and then I've never... I, I, uh, I get that. I didn't I didn't even like it the first time I played through it. I think the Final Fantasy X, I didn't, I didn't really like it that much until I got to the end. And uh, the ending is pretty great in it. Yeah. And it changed my entire opinion of the game. I mean, I was thinking about that just the other day, actually, while I was like going to work. Because um, mm-hmm. I, I really disliked Final Fantasy VIII, and so I kind of gave up on it. But I bought... And now you feel like... Like, I bought that oh. the, ga- the, the, the day it came out, Final Fantasy VIII. Right. And I played it for a while. Which was I, the, the day before the Dreamcast came out, by the way. Oh, there you go. And um, I played it for a while, and I just lost interest and, and just mm-hmm. quit. And I've never gone back to it. And I just kind of wonder... If I went if back to it now, now, I wonder if I would have, you know, like maybe I'm a little bit well, less judgy and I have a little bit more patience, you know, and maybe I would think it was cool. Because I was kind of the same way where I played through most of it. But, the, you know, like I said, it came out the day before the Dreamcast. So I played through to a certain point and then just like was focused on Dreamcast for a while. Yeah. And I eventually did go back and get to, you know, the last area in Final Fantasy VIII, but I don't remember anything about it. And like maybe that's what we should do sometime. Is that we should uh, make it a point to replay Final Fantasy VIII and see if we could reassess it. Yeah, you know. I just remember that like back later. then, it's like it wouldn't take much for me to be like, okay, I don't want, I don't like this. And I remember with Final Fantasy VIII, I don't even remember the main character's name, but you know he had Squall. Yeah, right, Squall, and he had like his weapon was that gun blade. Which is like such a stupid idea. Yeah, because yeah. right, because you would you would go attack, and then you'd I think it was like R two or whatever it was. You'd you'd push like one of the trigger buttons, and if you did it at just the right time, it was like yeah. a, you got like a bonus, right? It was like a super yeah. attack. And I just thought that was like the most stupid gimmicky thing. And I think well, it's like how you I already kind of didn't like the maybe I, I don't think I liked sort of the tone of the game and how like. Mm-hmm. Well, he's a dick. Right. And so that, and then trying to do that and not being able to even really pull it off, I was like, you know what? I've, I'm done. Yeah. And, but I don't, you know, I don't think I played that game for probably more than like eight hours, mm-hmm. you know, over the. Well, you should, maybe that's what we should do yeah. is like re, 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 revisit it. So, you know, I, <laughs> there, when you get the Guardian Forces, there, there's something you can unlock that makes it so you hold down the select button, you can hold, the, then you jam on the, uh, on the X button. To like make it more powerful, yeah. And you know, when it comes to turn-based games, like don't make me be any more involved than I have to be. That's how I don't want to sit there. That's how it's when it's turn-based. <laughs> like, it's like I don't want I don't want to I don't want to time a button press right. every single time yes. on these random battles. Yes. Don't make me do this. Don't stuff. turn like, a turn-based just... RPG into an action RPG. That's what I felt like it was doing. Yeah, I mean, it's not even action. It's just like. We're going to, like, make you do something so you, like, you got to pay attention. Yeah. Yeah. I just, you know, I just, <laughs> I just want a battle, battle system I can ignore. Well, I don't know about that, but. Uh, <laughs> I mean. Yeah. I, I know. I know. But I'm, I'm just saying that in in that, like, 
it's it's so uh, simple and unrewarding. Yeah. To like really be involved and have to pull that button, press that button for like a little bit more damage. It's like yes, uh-huh. and you don't really like. I could just ignore it, sure. Yeah. But if it's there, like I'm going to feel this need to do it every single, gosh darn time. Right. Uh. Oh yeah, you're listening to episode 26 of Here's My Question for You. I don't really have anything good for the number 26. Uh, I um, met my wife when I was 26. There you go. Okay, this yeah. was the uh, Corey meeting his wife special. Yeah, of Here's My Question. I may have for been you. All at the end of 25 though when I think about it, oh. but it doesn't matter. Like 26 is like when we say that we met. Okay. Although she might feel differently. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, anyway, we're going to do uh, emails this time yes. on the show just to try to maybe. I think it's a good approach a because, you know, we recorded 25 yesterday. See, I wasn't going to tell people that. That's OK. But that's I mean, I think that I think that if we record like two days in a row, yeah. I think it's a good idea. Like, oh, let's just like make that second one. Yeah. An email. Yeah. And I mean, part of the reason for doing that, of course, is that, you know, we skipped last week. And, you know, if we had had an, a spare episode, we could have had something to upload. So. We're, we're flying right. too close to the sun. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so first email comes from Paul, and uh, Paul puts some dummy text up here. Ich habe eine Frage für Ihnen, vielen Dank. Ich stecke diese hier, weil ihr gesagt habt, dass ihr nicht lesen wollt. So it's saying, uh, he's explaining he put dummy text up there so that we won't see what's below it. There you go. Um, How did you know that? I took German in high school. Oh. Okay, so here's my question. What do you think... Well, this is a weird... This, maybe this this will be better for you, but I didn't even know this was oh, a thing great. people were doing. What do you think about Steam games on physical discs? I came across this for the first time last weekend when I purchased a secondhand copy of Civilization V for PC from a used media store. When I tried to install the game, I had to register with Steam and put in a product key. I was shocked to find out that even though I had possession of the game, I couldn't register the product key and play, even offline, because the previous owner had already registered the key. How is there not a class action lawsuit? So that seems like a way we can still have physical media, but it has right. the same DRM as digital media. So... Because that, I mean, what, ha- you know, even if the same person owned the disc, if something happened, they tried to install it later on, like a few years mm-hmm. later, and they didn't have the same Steam account anymore, even though it's their game, they wouldn't be able to play it anymore. Like, that seems like BS to me. Seems like a waste of energy on their part. But I, maybe it was an older game, so that that was just uh, kind of like a, you know, c- trying to get people to join Steam that early on. Maybe it I, I bet it doesn't happen anymore. I mean, I, it's, it's I Civ Five. I don't know when that came out, but I, I mean, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't even know that Steam games being released physically was a thing. I mean, it just seems like somebody g- is giving you the product key on a card, right? But here's a CD, I guess. So that I mean, I guess it would save you some bandwidth, right? You wouldn't have to download a 50 gig game if it came with like a DVD. So there's right. that, and I'm I'm sure when that was a when that was a big deal, like I'm sure that maybe broadband wasn't nearly as widespread as it is now. Yeah, you know, there's just no reason. Yeah, but I think that sounds. I I, I would be surprised if there's anybody doing that now. Like it just sounds like a waste of effort. Yeah, you know, I'd rather just have like a card with a key in there if if that's what you're going to do. Right, right. Well, thank you for the question, Paul. That was from January 9th, by the way. Um, I'm just, you seem to like to know that stuff. So I'm telling you also yeah, from yeah. January, this one also came in on January 9th from Sam. Oh, um, what? You don't like Sam's? No, I do like Sam. All right. That's a weird, I'm wondering if it's, it's a weird uh, noise to make Sam that, uh, is in our, is in our discord. Well, I, I don't sure want to listen. say the guy's last name on, it seems right. rude. Oh yeah. Obviously. Only docks and people. Um, <laughs> All right, so I've been watching both of your channels for years, so I was excited to hear you were doing a podcast. I'm the same age, and the conversation is nostalgic and doesn't disappoint. Well, that's that's always my goal in life is just to not disappoint people. 
And I'm not even really yeah. joking when I say that. Even in like any general conversation. Yeah. I don't want the other person to be disappointed in the conversation that yes. we had. Uh, okay, says, here's my question for you. I often think about how I felt the first time I played the original Mario Brothers or Mario 64. It was a new feeling and it felt groundbreaking. What games from your past have made you feel like that and why? So I guess, like, what's a game you played that kind of wowed you? And if you need, you, mm-hmm. I can tell you need a minute. I, I, I got. No, I mean, it's just like, there's, you know, I've. It's gonna it's gonna be the the same games that I've like mentioned so many different times in different places. Yeah, you know, Fantasy Star, Lunar, Space Harrier. But like, um, what about what about Lunar, for example? Was like, mm-hmm. like how was that? Oh man, I'm, I'm just asking honestly. I haven't played Lunar. Like, what about Lunar was like groundbreaking for you? For me, yeah. I mean, I've, I've said this before. Like, on like I think I did a, a I was on another pa- podcast talking about Lunar. The thing with with Lunar for me was the writing in it. Uh, for the first time, I was playing a game that I felt like the writing made it seem like the characters like talked like real people. They just like talked to each other, and I felt like I was, you know, like they were just like, real people. Yeah. That was and that was a big eye opener for me. See, now you're making me want to play Lunar. Well, I mean, I don't know if that would come across in the same way, but you know, in 1992, that was that was a big deal. Yeah. And uh, for me, I mean, that just it, the, when when I like defend working designs, it's like because of that. That's what I liked about it. A lot of people, a lot of people, really don't like what working designs did. And as time has gone on, you know, I talk about working designs in the most recent video that I did on ROM hacks, and I mentioned that I liked the working designs. And someone commented and said, "Oh." Are you, did you did you say working designs or did you say wrecking designs? And I responded to that. I'm like, oh, I'm talking about like I played dumb. Yeah. Like oh, I was like, oh, you know, I mean working designs. Like they localized lunar and potful mail and stuff. And I like I really wanted them to like respond. Yeah. And they they haven't yet. Maybe they will today. Saying like oh, you know, like they just like wrecked all these games by localizing them. And I could just be like, well, I liked it. Yeah. And then that's that's, but so just what? like how many games would we have not gotten here at all if it wasn't for them? Like, would you rather have a game come out that maybe you don't care for the choices that they made with a game, mm-hmm. or would you rather not get to play it at all? Right. Yeah. I mean, it's less than twenty games, <laughs> probably that we would have gotten. But but I mean, a lot of those are because are, they they probably inspired a lot of people. Yeah. We wouldn't have gotten Kadash. On Turbo C, uh, Turbo Graphics 16. True. I love that yeah. game. Uh, well, so my easy an- this is a real basic answer, but my easy answer is Sonic the Hedgehog. Like when I the first time I saw that game, I like I never saw that game in like a store. Mm-hmm. Like I remember, you know, I would see like a Sega Genesis kiosk back then, and it was always running like Altered Beast, and I don't recall yeah. ever seeing uh, Sonic the Hedgehog running on a on a demo kiosk. Before my friend got his Genesis, like it would have been like the spring of of ninety two, I think, and mm. maybe even earlier than that. But I think it was probably like, uh, like spring of ninety two. I I feel like it was spring of ninety one. No, no, no I feel I'm talking like it about was June. Hey, oh, okay, zip it. So I, I thought yeah. you were about the release. No, I'm talking about when, when my friend got his Genesis. Okay, um, that was like like late winter, early spring of of ninety two, and and he brought it over to my house, and that was the first time I ever saw. Sonic and mm-hmm. just I'd never seen a platform game that was like that fast and right. you know because we played a lot of uh, PC games me and him uh, Stuart mm-hmm. that was my friend Stuart because we were both into PC and then of course we both had NESs and you know I of course I loved you know like the Mario games and whatnot but you know like on the PC like the early PC games were very bad at scrolling like they couldn't really have scrolling games right and so that's why you couldn't really have games even like Super Mario Brothers uh, running well on the PC. You know, you can play games mm-hmm. like Commander Keen and whatnot, but they're a little bit choppy because the hardware is not good for scrolling. And so when I saw right. Sonic the Hedgehog and, you know, just how smoothly like so and quickly smooth. it scrolled, it, to me it was – it like that game alone is why I got a Genesis. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, that makes sense. That yeah. makes sense. I mean, that, I'm sure that – you know, you're clearly we're not alone. 
Yeah. Yeah. I think I feel like Sonic 1 might be the first game that I pre-ordered. Yeah. I don't know why I was able to do it, but I put money down on it. It's probably my all-time favorite Genesis game. Yeah, I that makes sense. I mean, there's sense. I mean, I there's a few games game where the it's like I, they'd be I fighting love. for first, but Sonic is in so there. you you like that that first one more than any other games in the series? Oh, for sure. But I mean, part yeah, of that is here. just nostalgia, but part of it is yeah. just a really really good game. I wish it was longer and not so yeah. easy, but. You know, but it's but it's okay. Like it's, I think the, the length of that is is pretty nice. Like I, I feel, feel like, like Sonic, Sonic Two, 2 is too drag, long. Yeah, Sonic Two drags on too long. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, all right. This is from Matthew. Uh, this is January eleventh. So we've moved forward <laughs> two days. Uh, Matthew said, "Studies show that most." I feel like we've talked about this type of thing. Studies show that most people stop listening to new music once they reach their early mm-hmm. 30s. Since both of you are old men, which I I freely accept that tag, you not as much with your graphic t-shirts, how do you still seek out and listen to new music? I, you know, I've thought about this a lot. Oh. Then. Uh, when I remember, I heard something about that, that study, and I'm like, oh my God, it's true. Um, the only time that I really like seek out and and actively like listen to new stuff a lot of times is when it's been recommended or I just like happen to run into it or hear it in some like random situation. Uh, my wife listens to, listens to Pandora a lot and it's just like a lot of different stuff and I'll go up there and I'll hear something like, Oh, what's this? And, uh, she'll kind of bring it up and say, Oh, this is what it is. Cause she's here. Like a lot of times she's hearing, a lot of this for the first time too and it's just you know for her when she's working it's it's like it's background music and uh but just in terms of like f- straight up looking f- for new music it just doesn't happen yeah uh, you remember in the first like episode Apple of music, the podcast you were like i'm gonna listen to a new album every single day right but you know what it wouldn't be a new just came out that day album or that this year album it'd be like i was thinking about it because i was going to go through all like the records that i have and i did it for a month and i just haven't really done it since yeah (laughs) which is is you know understandable but you know just like in terms like brand new stuff yeah coming out like now i just basically don't or if it's something that i you know it's like a new album from somebody that i have like previously known to like, you know, I've, uh, I've been listening to the new album from Metric, which is a band that I really like. Yeah. Um, and you know, like if they have a new one, I'll listen to that. Great album, by the way. It's like, yeah. Like from, from, from Terra or something like that yeah. from Terra, from a Terra. I mean, I'm definitely it's, it's, very guilty of not listening to much like brand new music. I mean, I'm more, mm-hmm. here's my thing is like, there's so much music that's not brand new, but that's new to me. Yeah. Right? That Right, right. You know, I cuz I'm still discovering all the time like music, like I'll get into music that is not at all new, but that I'd never heard before, like an artist I wasn't familiar with and I get all into that. But I mean, for me I think it's a little bit more difficult generally speaking for me to get into like modern music just cuz it's not up my alley and I think maybe if I made more of an effort to find like, you know, independent stuff or, you know, whatever. But, you know, it's just like when I hear, you know, not to pick on them again, but, you know, when I hear something like Imagine Dragons come on the radio, I'm just like, I guess this is what rock radio sounds like now. And it's just like, that's fine, but it's just not for me, you know? Yeah. And, and, you know, that's okay. Like, I wonder if that's how Rick Beato feels. Probably so. Yeah. I think that's. But he likes to make videos tearing them down. But he can just he can like scientifically dissect why, in his opinion, they're not good. Whereas I just listen to yeah. it and be like, yeah, that's not really for me, and then I don't feel the need to go make a video about it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> Wait, you could if you maybe you should. Yeah. So I think he had two follow up questions, but I feel like one of them you already answered, which is what is your go to method to find new music? But number two was what was the last new artist or band you discovered that has become a favorite of yours? So do you have a um, I mean, mine I already talked about was Dua Lipa. That's the mm-hmm. just because that's the last. Not that I've been listening to. You know, I went through my little Dua Lipa phase, and I feel like I'm kind of done with that. But 
That's yeah. the last one I could think of where if anybody asked me what I think of her, I'm like, oh, yeah, she's awesome. But mm-hmm. like I listened to that album a bunch of times and then it kind of went back in the case and I haven't listened to it lately. So. So the most recent new music that I've listened to is this band called Soft Cult, uh, which I saw like mentioned by uh, this guy whose podcast I've been listening to uh, called Waterproof Records with uh, Jacob Gibbons. He like he like talks about this song because they did this cover of of uh, of Nirvana's uh, what is it? Francis Farmer will have her revenge on Seattle or something like that. They did a cover of that song and it's very good. And then I like said, oh, I'm going to like listen to whatever else that this band has on Apple Music. And it really made me realize, and this is something I talked to somebody else about recently. So many bands now, like if they are like, you know, new bands and just putting music out there, it's almost like it's very, very rare for them to have like a whole album. Like they just have like, singles like on their on streaming services and there's like maybe an ep yeah but there's almost like no full albums so i'm like going through this band i mean even some older like, all their, all their artists are doing that i mean i you know maybe not kind of in the lane you were talking about but even like riddle yankovic i think he said after he released that mandatory fun album several years ago he kind mm-hmm. of said he thought that would be the last full album he ever released and that he was after that would just start releasing singles just because that's sort of the nature of the music business now. Yeah. And it, 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 for him, it would really work. Oh, yeah. Especially since, you know, he's always like parroting like newer music. Just keep that stuff coming out to be more timely with that. Yeah. Excuse me. But, you know, like I was looking through their music and it's just, you know, 20 some or maybe like 15 songs, just all singles. I'm like, then I got to go through each one, like add, add, add. And it just make, makes it a pain in the butt to like add all their music. I'm sure there's a way to say like add all from yeah. the artist. Because then like then you have to make a playlist. But when something. I'm driving, I can do that. But is, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how Apple Music is, but like on on uh, uh, what do I use? Title. Yeah, thanks. Like, on title, you can just go to the artist's like page or whatever in the app. And it lists all their, it, it says top tracks, but I mean, it's, it's a ridiculous number of tracks. And so like, you mm-hmm. can just play that, but I, yeah. yeah, but it's like, in this is, I guess this is something that we've talked about before is like that. It makes me sad that the, the art of the album is no longer even much of a thing. Well. You know, because then there's not like as much opportunity to like find, oh, I like this song, like like the deep cuts. You don't yeah. find that stuff anymore now. Yeah, I agree. Uh, all right. Thank you for the question, uh, Matthew. Uh, oh, we did that one already. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Not and, archiving the ones that we've done or flagging Well, it, it had already been clicked on, but I was like, why is there a random email down here that we read already? But it's because I guess we, oh. maybe we went through a phase where we were just picking them randomly. I don't know. Next one is from... Uh, oh, it's kind of a personal question. I like that. Okay, this is from Replicant813. Okay. I, I always know, think I it's know. whenever I see that kind of stuff, I'm like, were there 812 other replicants? And so that was what you had to take? Or, or is they the 813? That Blade could Runner? be his birthday. That could be his area hmm. code. I don't know. I always, always think that's there, interesting. I always want, there's got to be a story behind those numbers. Either a Blade Runner fan or a Near fan, I'm guessing. Yeah. Or both. Yes. Uh, he says, oh, I love the podcast. It's been my Monday morning at work therapy. So Sorry about last week. I was just going to say, so just just know that when we don't record or we don't release an episode, these are the kinds of people that are suffering. N- think n- about that. that. We're, and we think about every time. I do. I feel one. very, very guilty. Yeah. Oh, oh, nice. Okay, perfect. Oh, I love this. Um, there's a, he He gave us also... In addition to his question, he has a does it slap or should we eat it? So oh, nice. perfect. Okay, his question. If there's one thing that you could go back in time to do differently or make a different decision, what would it be? It doesn't even have to be deep or super life impacting. Uh, also, it can't be going back to buy cheap game stuff. Because <laughs> that would be, you know, the easy answer. What about, is it, what about like selling certain things? I mean, I don't know. I don't Does feel that like count? that's the spirit in which the question is being asked. Like, oh, I wish I yeah. could go back in time and buy a bunch of Apple stock. Like, that's 
That would be kind of yeah, like the lame different. answer, yeah. you know. Like if you just changed something from your past, yeah. like a like a poor decision, yeah, that you made. I mean, for um, me, I'd say like that's difficult because you know I think you can easily get caught in this trap of you know if I had if I could go back in time and do this differently or do that differently, you know, like. I mean, there's just like, there's little stuff, you know, like, like when I left community college and went to university, like I could have stayed at community college for another year Mm -hmm. and I wish I had done that. Or, you know, there's been times when I thought I wish I'd majored in something different or I wish I hadn't gone to college at all, which I think we kind of talked about in the past. Like I wish I'd gone into the trades, but Mm -hmm. my thing with like, you know, getting into sort of that headspace is, and maybe this doesn't apply to a lot of people, but like. If you're satisfied, like if you're happy with the way your life is right now, like like you and me sitting here today doing this podcast is a direct result of every single little decision we've mm-hmm. ever made in our lives, right? Yeah. Like something yep, some 100%. little thing could have happened differently and then like you and it's I like never the butterfly effect. Right. Right? Right. And so you kind of want to be careful. That's the only reason we are here right now. Right. You want to be careful thinking like, "Oh, I wish I had gone back and done this differently or done that differently." Because even if it's something that's not that big of a deal, it could have a huge impact on where you would be right now. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it would change everything, really. Yeah. And like, if you, maybe if you did something like embarrassing. Sure. I, if you yeah. didn't do that, like, like a something embarrassing one time, then, you know, maybe you wouldn't have made any decisions to like, oh, maybe I need to avoid doing this again or something. Yeah. Or... You know, you, you avoid doing it one time and you do it another time and then it's like the outcome is way worse yeah. or something like that. Yeah. So really the, I mean, the op, like, should the answer be like, I don't, I wish I did, I wouldn't change anything. Like that, that is the answer. If you're happy with where you're at. I mean, that's my answer. Should be the answer. It's, you know, but, it's interesting there. I mean, not to bring this up again, but uh, there's a Star Trek The Next Generation episode about that. That's really, really, really good. It's called Tapestry. Yeah. Yeah. He just like changes one decision. Somebody changes one decision. No, it was like it was like one of those Q episodes. So, okay. which is funny because it's like that's why I'm saying like the way Picard season two was. It's like it was if you watched the original Next Generation series, it's very obvious that Q had some sort of affection for Picard because he would do nice things for him. Mm-hmm. And so he basically did this thing where Picard had been like lamenting, you know, some of the bad decisions that he'd made over the course of his career. And so Q basically took him back in time so that he could undo like what he thought was his biggest regret in life or professional Mm -hmm. life and had that go differently. And it turned into like his life being way different than it was in like a bad way. And then sort of the the end of the episode, you know, is like, you know, now Picard's back wherever he belonged. And he said something about how like, you know, Q taught him that you, you, pulling on the loose strings that make up the tapestry of your life can make the whole thing fall apart. Unra- Unraveled yes. probably is the word he used, I would imagine. Yeah. So, I mean, it makes sense. It, it I, uh, I mean, I can't think of anything where I just feel like I wish I could go back and, and change anything. Yeah. I, I, I often think like how fun it would be to go back and know everything that you know now. Yeah. Um, like the what is it like the the faces song right? I wish I knew. Wish I knew then what I know now. Wish that I knew what I knew now when I was younger. Whatever that you know that song. Whose faces? Song, uh, his face isn't that. But isn't that Rod Stewart was in 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 that band? I don't know. Before he was solo. Maybe I'm not. I mean I'm not a huge <laughs> Rod Stewart aficionado, so I'm not sure what his history. Yeah, well is. me either. But I'm just saying. Um, but you didn't even know that Johnny Rotten was in a band after the Sex Pistols, so. Well, because the Sex Pistols, like I feel, are the only ones that really matter. I don't. Public Image Limited was kind of a big deal. Not as big of a deal as the Sex Pistols. Oh yeah. All right. I I forgot. I I felt like I was bombing you yesterday after the show with like YouTube links. So I, I, uh, I no, it's it. I didn't want to keep going, <laughs> but I realized yeah. I forgot. I was going to send you a link to a couple of Public Image Limited songs just to see if like, oh yeah, that song, you know. Yeah, not because I'm well, trying I'm, to get I'm you sure into them. I just the I'm curious. Like, do you really not know about them, or do you just not know them by name? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's 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 possible. Yeah. Oh, all right. Um, Did you have anything else on the? Uh... Um, I mean, no, no other thoughts. I I hope that 
they're not disappointed with that answer, but I, I feel like that is the best answer. Yeah. Is that I wouldn't change anything. Yeah. Because, I mean, I'm here right now and I'm I'm happy. Yeah. I mean, life is just not always rosy and we don't always make yeah. the right decisions, but that's life and it, that's what makes you who you are, right? Yes. So unless you're actually unhappy with who you are or where yeah. you are, which unfortunately lots of people are, you shouldn't right. really spend any time second guessing all the things you've done, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And, you know, we're, we're not in jail. Yeah. We have, we have a roof over our head. We're not, you know, broke. Yeah. Like broke enough to, <laughs> to like not have a, have a, have a home. Yeah. Um, we're both happily married. So like, I think that we're like, both bald. There's not. So, I mean, not everything. It's not all, uh, you know, peaches and nectarines <laughs> but, or whatever. But there were, you know what? Yeah. There's almost nothing you can do. To, there's no way we could have like changed anything in our life to prevent that from happening. See, if we had a sponsor, that would be the perfect time to be like, in this episode of Here's My Question for You is sponsored by Keeps and then do yes. all that. See? That's uh, if uh everything <laughs> opportunity missed right there. Yep. Yeah. Well, you know, if, if if Keeps ever comes back or comes to us in the first place and says, you know, yeah. you want to do this. Yeah. We'll we'll redo this. We'll okay. we'll like do a flashback. Okay. To this. Perfect. Uh, okay. So if you don't mind, could you please hit me? Could we do the upbeat one. This is more of an upbeat one. Sure. Does he slap? 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 Does he oh, I dropped my god damn it. glass. My my uh, my pint glass. Butterfingers Carlson over there. Can I just say <laughs> that? I still think it's awesome that we have two. It would be awesome just to have one, but we have two themes. Like that's, yeah. You know, when you talked about, oh, we, it'd be cool if somebody made us one. Like I didn't think anybody was going to make us anything. And so the fact that we got two of them, it just warms the the cockles of my heart. Like uh, yes. what's it's, his it's, face? We, said. It's an embarrassment of riches. Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. So since I already can see it in front of me, I figure I, I'm going to kick this mostly over to you. Although I do have strong opinions on this. Okay. Okay. Although number, I don't. I'm not sure. I'm gonna. I'm kind of guessing what he means by number one. Number one is freezy pops. Oh, okay. Which yeah, to yeah, me yeah. is that like otter pops? Like like push up pops. Like you cut the. They're like in the yeah like uh, otter pops. We have otter pops. Oh, I, I I never heard of otter. You're pops, saying it's like I that mean, plastic bag thing. You cut the top and and it's just like a big block yeah. of f- uh, flavored ice in there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, that's number one. It's freezy pops. Okay. Number two is Twizzlers. Mm. Number three is Corn Nuts. Oh, God. Corn Nuts are definitely out. Really? For me. No, no, no Corn Nuts, as far as I'm concerned. I, I should have it. Not that there's anything wrong with Corn Nuts. I just don't. If I, uh, that's like an easy get rid of. Um, uh, you know, the freezy pops are really good, but I, I don't have them very often. Um, they used to like, you ever have, did you ever eat one and like the plastic bag like cuts the side of your mouth? I mean, I don't specifically remember that, but I'm sure it probably happened. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to I'm going to say Twizzlers like although Twizzlers are not amazing. Yeah. You know, like if there's if there's Twizzlers around, especially red ones, like I will eat them. Yeah. Just, you know, cuz I I I'm a sucker for uh fake cherry flavor. Yeah. Okay. What can I say I like it? Yeah. All right. So, for me, Twizzlers you know, I I don't think I've ever purchased a Twizzler in my life. Like to me, Twizzlers are like I think I talked about this on a on a flashback like Halloween special or something sort of the hierarchy of Halloween candy and like yeah. Twizzlers are the kind of thing that would still be hanging around like with they'd be down at the bottom of the my plastic pumpkin like with the Smarties you know after all the Among good stuff the detritus yeah basically the Halloween candy detritus down at the bottom so like I have like the only cool thing about Twizzlers was the commercials they had on TV with those big lips like it was the big singing, oh, it was just a pair of know, lips with feet, yeah. you know? Like that was cool, I guess. But yeah. that's like the only positive association I have with Twizzler. So that's a pretty easy yeet. 
Uh, <laughs> yeah. Freezy Pops, or as we had them here, Otter Pops. Uh, like, I have great memories of, you know, summer vacation, like swimming in somebody's backyard pool, like just kind of like mm-hmm. floating in the pool with an Otter Pop in my hand, you know, and like, because you know, it'd be like 100 degrees outside. And so to be in yeah. the cool pool, you know, sucking down an Otter Pop, like I have great memories of that. Mm-hmm. But that being said, I have no interest really in eating one now. Like I love ice cream right. and frozen stuff. Like I'd rather go get like a higher quality, you know, popsicle or uh, you know, f- frozen fruit bar or ice cream bar or whatever. Like I'm not I'm not going out and buying Otter Pops now. But right, you know, yeah. I have nothing bad to say about them. But I, I got to eat them. Uh, corn nut, corn nuts. On the other hand, like to me that you know. I, I was very shocked at how cavalierly you were able to just toss corn nuts out the window. Corn nuts are a lifetime favorite of mine. Not are they just like peanuts or what are they like? How could so you don't even know what a corn nut is? How can you? How can you just? I mean, I, I assume that. Have you ever had like, corn nuts? No, right? Maybe, maybe. I mean, maybe I just didn't know what they were called. I assume that they are. They're called like, corn nuts. That's the brand. They're corn nuts. Oh, then no, I haven't. All right, do so me I a just, favor, I guess I... please, and just buy yes. a bag of corn nuts and try it. If you don't like it, that's fine. But if you've never had okay. corn nuts, so corn, they're like toasted. You ever seen like Incan corn in, you know, ink, like the Incan Empire, Incan corn? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. that's like I, what corn nuts are based on. But it's like, imagine toasted corn, like whole kernels of corn. Instead of popping okay. it, I think they're really fried, but so they're like crunchy. I mean, if you mm-hmm. like corn, I mean, it's they have a very like strong. Of corn. Like you can get plain corn nuts that just taste very similar to like Fritos. Yeah. But then they have like flavored corn nuts, and they have like a barbecue flavor that's really good. There's a chili picante that's very good. There's ranch flavor, which that's not really my jam. Although I do love cool ranch Doritos, but I, yeah, I'm not getting. Okay, ranch if corn I nuts, if I see some, I'll get some. But I really uh, like them. I'm, I'm I will claim ignor- ignorance, but I feel like I'd probably still choose. Twizzlers over whatever they end up being, but who knows? Maybe well, maybe it'll change my life. No, I mean I'm not trying to get you to change. Your, I'm just saying if you've never had corn nuts, you should you should try them. Like I thought, All right. based on your reaction, I assume like, oh yeah, I really hate corn nuts. But it just seems like you don't okay. even know about corn nuts. So yeah, yeah, I'm which I, that's yes, a little bit I, shocking I, for me, but that's okay. <laughs> um. Oh my goodness. All right. So speak of the devil here. Uh, next one here is from Joseph. And the title, like the subject Joseph. line. What? I just think of uh, the intro to the original Resident Evil. Okay. Where Jill, like the live action Jill says, Joseph. Yeah. Okay. You know what I'm talking about. Sure. Uh, so the subject <laughs> line of the email is hair. All right. So uh, maybe we already talked about this. I don't know. So uh, he says, greeting. Here's my questions. Uh, here's my question for you. As a couple of follically challenged fellows, I was wondering what you would do if you both woke up with full heads of hair tomorrow. Would you shave your head to maintain the bald look? Would Corey sport a pompadour to rival Elvis? <laughs> would Chris rock a mullet? Thank you for your time. Oh my God. I, you know, I probably would just cut it off again. Like you'd shave your head I, if you had. Yeah, you know, my wife always told me that I was bent. I was meant to be bald. Don't you think that's the kind so, of thing that your wife would say? Just you know, yeah, to but, seem but she supportive. Said that she's like always thought that. I mean, I never had hair with with her. Like, I, okay. mean, I had already cut all my hair off when I met her. Well, then she can't really have an opinion. She never saw the she, before. She cannot. No. Yeah. Uh. I mean. I don't know. I would probably go to a haircut place and be like, "Yeah, what do you think would look good?" Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't even. I can't even begin to think like what I would do with it, and it just now at at forty four years old, it just sounds like a lot of work to do something, you know, like that. Uh, what I do want to ask you though, I mean, and because people when I uh, mention this, they they think it's like weird. Um, even though like I don't really have much hair, like I still use shampoo every time I shower. Yeah. And do you do the same? Yeah. But I feel like 
It's not even but, for my hair. It's more like for my scalp. Because it really, a yeah. lot of, especially a lot of men's hair products, you know, shampoo, is talking more about like scalp health. And sometimes I have right. problems. Like, you know, I, I don't know why my scalp seems like it gets like easily irritated. So, mm-hmm. you know, I, I do use shampoo, but I choose it based on what I think is best. Because I mean, I cut my hair. Like, I don't shave it like you do, but like my hair is probably about as long as yours is right now. I mean, I use like the, Right. I use like the shortest setting, you know, I mean, on the is, clippers. I, which Yeah, so I mean, we do the same thing. There's there's yeah. always a shadow. Yeah. Yeah. We but, never uh, get rid of the like the shadow. But yeah, so for that Even, reason I, I do use uh I do use shampoo. But if I woke up tomorrow with a full head of hair, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, and we talked about this before, like, you know, uh I mentioned seeing like the middle aged guys who are like, you know, catalog models. And like some yeah. of them oh, might even yeah, be yeah. fat, but they still have like this amazing head. Of, you know, yeah. Not just that they yeah. have hair, but like the way it's styled. So like, if like I woke like, up yeah. like tomorrow and I had like this full head of hair that probably would be a lot of gray. Yeah, you know, same with mine. Like yeah. I would go, I'd I'd go spend like you know a couple hundred bucks maybe or whatever, and go to like a higher end salon and be like, you know, right. I right, want yeah. like turn this hair into something worth having, because otherwise, yes. I mean. That's, that's similar to what I was saying, I guess. I would yeah. go someplace and have them, like, say, do something that would that looks good. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, you know, you see those, you know, like the, like the silver fox exactly. models. Yes, I would right? want to like look at, like at a like, silver Even fox. at, like, Target. You yeah. Because they have, like, their old, uh, like, Goodfellows ink or something like yeah. that, whatever their yeah. company is called, that they, like, buy their stuff from. It's, like, always, I don't know, just really attractive older guys with like perfect hair yeah right <laughs> that's what I, I would want to look like one of those guys that's what i'm saying yeah 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 all right next question is from james this was uh january 20th by the way jeez we're still, we're still on the january that's you know it's it it's it's a good thing that we have so many emails to go through uh oh Honestly. man i don't know if i'm gonna be able to think of an answer to this one uh, he just he says, you know, uh, he's been enjoying the podcast. Thanks for hours of entertainment. You're welcome. He says, my question is, is there anything that stands out as the most awkward moment of your life, whether it happened to you or you were merely a witness to it? Now, I'll just, I'll, I'll go first. And it's a non-answer. I, I can only say I was so awkward as... I mean, not really as much as a kid, but especially as a teenager and like a young adult mm-hmm. that it was just, you know, it was like 15 years of cringe to me. Yeah. You know? I mean, do you like, still like think about that every once in a while and you're kind of like, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, certain things like that happen for me. Yeah. And I'm sure I have many things that I think about uh, happening. Um, and some of that stuff I'm like, I do not want to admit publicly <laughs> well i mean that's kind of so, how i feel like i don't really want to discuss my you know standout embarrassing moments of acting like an idiot yeah on the show but i mean like there's times though when it happens you're like oh i'm never gonna be able to forget that happening even now it happens i mean I, there's just, just sometimes can, even now i'm having forget. a conversation with somebody and then later i'll reflect on what i said and i'm just like oh i can't believe i said that yeah you know i not in the same way where it's just it, it it's it is painful, but it's like it's part of being human, I guess. Yeah. I mean, it would be weird if you know people don't have that happen that often. Yeah. You know, that's it's it seems more weird to not have those moments. Yeah. I mean, I I guess um, it's a perfectly fair question. I I don't have like some standout thing I can really. I mean, honestly, you know that. Adventures of Johnny Wad situation was extremely <laughs> awkward. <laughs> oh, but, but, would, but at least I could but, say I was only ten. Imagine if I was like twenty. Yeah. Then yeah. that's then it gets real weird, you know. Yes. Uh, I mean, did and I ever I mention as, as like a, when my wife and I were on our honeymoon, we were on a cruise? Did I mention that already? The the maid walked in on it. I did mention that. That's awkward. Although more so yeah. for them. It's not. Yeah, know. more so for them, and also like. Whatever that's not, that's not embarrassing. I was kind of like, oh, that happened. Yeah. But you know, it's like th- that stuff that is like just happened due to circumstance. Yeah. But sometimes when it's like, you know, like maybe you say something expecting some sort of reaction, 
in a certain way and um, it doesn't go the way that you expect it to. And then afterwards you are thinking that was that I will never forget how badly that just went. <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right. But that's but, I mean that's part of part of life. Yeah. So I mean again, worst, thank you for the, the question. It's a fair life. question. I just uh anything that's like, you know, truly embarrassing for me, I just don't really wanna talk like I don't want to relive it, but I also don't want to share it with the public. So Yeah. I mean I'm sure there's plenty of different things that you could think of and even right now will like for me at least will make me start to sweat profusely just thinking about it. Yeah. And the 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 idea of reliving those moments as I am recording and you know able to see myself yeah talking about it. Yeah. And seeing your your live reaction to it like I don't want to do that. Right. At least right now. Yes. But maybe, you know, maybe this is something I will come back to if I think about uh something that it, I mean there's there's plenty of stuff. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure that there's even like recent stuff that will still make me feel that sure. way. Sure. I mean, we're all like, human. Like, yeah. All right. Next question is from Retro411. Uh, this guy hangs out in my uh, in my Discord. So, oh, okay. so what's up, man? He's always posting. He posts a lot of GIFs or GIFs, but it's GIFs. Yes. In, uh, <laughs> in the Discord that I, I enjoy. They're always like video game uh, GIFs. So right. I always like them. In fact, yesterday he posted... Yeah. Uh, Bionic Commando, Jeff. That was pretty cool. Um, you know what the like the, the, the uh, say to to say gifs, yeah, is something that will immediately like age you a certain certain time that's, uh, to a certain age. I think that's fine. I'm not. Uh, I'm not trying to. No, 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 no. Because I'm. I've always said gifs, and I've like forced myself to say gifs to people that if I said gifs. They would not understand what I was saying, uh, because maybe it's because we know. grew up with Jif peanut butter. Is that a thing anymore, Jif? I don't know. I think it ha- more has to do with the fact that we just like assumed that it was Jifs, and there was also JPEG. So you yeah. thought like JPEG, J, yeah. J, Gir- you know, giraffe. and also we were just in a, in a time where it's not something that people talk to each other about. Yeah, you know, like you know, like. We didn't even have like animated gifs when we were. That's true. They were. Kids. They were. Static they were just like GIFs. another like still image. Yeah. File format. You know, it's the same people that will call PNG is call them pings. Oh, I've never heard that. I don't care for that. I've at all. heard that a lot. Pings. Okay. All right. Anyways, uh, he says uh, interesting fake nonsense text to block the question. Do not eat pencils. They are not food. Also, you might die. Spaghetti sauce makes bad cologne. Debatable. And attracts people you would not want to date, also debatable. End fake nonsense text insert. Uh, and then he says, even though this question is aimed at Chris, I would like to hear Corey's opinion as well. Chris, you seem to enjoy older golf video games, but not older pool slash billiards video games. Mm. The gameplay mechanics to both of these sports games, uh, at least for 16-bit and older, are very similar. What is it about golf games that you like? And what is it about billiards games that you dislike? Uh, well, first of all, I would just say I don't dislike billiards games, but I guess, you know, you're not wrong that I'm not, I don't have some kind of attraction to them particularly. Mm-hmm. I think part of what I like about golf games is just the atmosphere. You know, like I, I can feel like I'm outside without having to go outside. And um, yeah, the I just, chirping birds. Yeah, or just, you know, the, the greenery and whatnot. And, uh, you know, I like, you know, all the holes are different, you know, and you have to kind of figure out, you know, which which club do I want to use here. You might have to do a little bit of, like, you know, back of the napkin, you know, math. before you. I, I like all that. And that's all stuff but, that I, like, I just let it auto-select that stuff from me. Oh, no, no some idea. games are really bad at picking the club for uh, you. And I don't know really? if it's on purpose. Or, like or, I didn't even I don't even know what you know like what you use in certain well usually it's in the man if you read the manual it'll have like a little chart of like what the maximum distance of each club is okay but you might because and it'll always like the game will always pick that based on your distance to the hole but if it's not a straight shot if it's like a dog leg or something then you can't trust a what dog it's saying leg? yeah you know when it goes like this and then back like that you know where you have to like 
you have to shoot the ball over here and then shoot it because there's like trees and whatnot in the way. You know? Okay. Then you can't trust what the computer's telling you at all. So uh, I just I like I like that aspect of it. You know, like just but also you know golf games just have a, for me an appealing atmosphere. I mean, I'm not saying I don't want someone to take that literally. I'm not playing. PGA Tour golf on the Genesis as a substitute for going outside and touching grass. I just, I just, I like the atmosphere that goes along with playing a golf game. And, yeah. um, it's relaxing. I, I mean, I don't think I've even really messed around with pool games that much. Yeah, me either. Uh, but I'm open to, like, if somebody were to say to me, hey, there's this billiards game. In fact, I mean, this guy's in my Discord. So when, I'll just ask him later, but if I forget to, recommend a, a billiards game to me that you think like this is the first one you should check out and i, I would 100 yeah. percent check it out do you like playing pool in person oh yeah i went through well no, i haven't played pool in a very very long time but uh mm-hmm. i went through a you phase me as, somebody who as a young adult where i used to play pool like almost every day because uh yeah it's like me and my friends weren't old enough to drink yet but there was mm-hmm. like this pool hall that we could go to where obviously they weren't going to serve you alcohol but it's some place we could hang out and I could, you know, play pool and, you know, smoke a half a pass, pack of cigarettes. Right. And uh, so we used to do that a lot. And I got, you know, somewhat decent at it, I would say. Like, not, like, competitively good at it. But good enough at it where you felt like you didn't suck. And, you know, then right. you would enjoy playing it a little bit more. What about, you ever you ever get into pool? I mean, I, I like it, but I, I definitely am not very good at it. Uh, I've not played it very much in recent years. But, I mean, before we had kids... You know, my wife and I used to go to bars and play if the pool table was open. Uh, she's always way better than I was. Um, I get I get all caught up on like having to do them like like an order. You know, don't you have to do it like in? Well, yeah. If you're playing uh, nine ball, you have to do them in order. Yeah. Right, and that's just like that is eight. Like eight ball is stripes versus solids, and then you don't have to do them right. in order. You just have your balls. But yeah, nine ball, yeah, you yeah. have to do them in order. Right. Um, so I'll, I'll do like straight versus solids. So that's, that's oh. fine. But, uh, I mean, I, I like playing and I will hang out and play it. Uh, but I'm not good at it. It's just fun to, in that yeah. atmosphere. I just like where I live. I don't, the only place I can think of that has a pool table is like the games area at, at work slash school. And, and then you can't, they don't have beer. Which, I mean, you don't yeah. have to, but it's like I'd rather go to a bar that had like a crusty pool table with that yeah. cool old pool table light hanging overhead. Yeah. And I can oh, go yeah, get yeah, yeah. like it's a, hanging you know, from chains. Like a, yeah, exactly. And I can go get like a cheap bottle. Of, like give me like a Miller light and I'm going to sit there and play yeah. pool, you know. But uh, I don't know. I don't know where I could go do that. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, I bet you could find it, but it's just like that's so much effort. I don't think it's that much effort, but yes, I would have to go like seek that out uh, yeah. uh, somehow. It's funny though, you know. I was just rewatching some of my uh, that golf PC Engine golf video that I did. Mm-hmm. Just not because I'm, you know. I mean, I feel like watching your own video seems kind of egotistical, but I was doing it because I want. I think I'm going to make that Famicom baseball game in sort of the same style. Oh right, and then I think I might so you want to refresh it. yourself. Right. I was like, what is exactly did I do? And okay, I'm going to try to do that again. But I think I'm going to upload mm-hmm. it to the main channel this time and see how that goes. Nice. All right. Uh, nice. We got time for one or two more here, I think. Yes. All right. This one is from Aaron, uh, A A R O N, Aaron. All right. Who, uh, wow, this is all in bold. Oh, I, this, I'm going to kick this one over to you. I think this is more uh, right. up your alley based on. Uh, recent uh, events uh, recently enjoying listening to both of you on my commutes in episode 20 you were discussing the Anbernic devices I just picked up the RG 350X 350XX and oh, okay that's like the little one the with the one. mini UI launcher it basically makes the device into a poor man's analog pocket it's really performative for $65 Fairly easy to set up with minimal fuss. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Never mind. This is not. That's not even. Uh, that's just the that's the the text. Yeah, but that's yeah, cool that you got that. I, I would I wouldn't mind messing around with one of those little ones. I don't know. I have such big hands. I don't know how um, comfortable that would be for me. I mean, even the analog yeah, you know, pocket, just because the way I have to hold it is not super ideal. But 
I mean, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and you know, they 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 feel like for that price, like they're more disposable. Like if, if something happens to it, it's not like the end of the world. Although you know, they're expensive, but they're not so expensive. It's like, oh my god. Yeah. Uh, I. You know, like so when they sent them to me, they sent. They sent there was three different colors and they sent like one of each color. Wow. I was like, "Oh my god, why are you sending me so many of them?" But I, I what I did is I just like uh gave them to my kids. Yeah. And uh they they've been like playing the crap out of them. Yeah. Uh what I did what I did initially, I said, "Okay, so I'm going to put some a bunch of games on here and what I want you to do is I want you to play five games on here. Like in the next couple of days over this weekend, play five games for more than 15 minutes each." And then I want you to tell me about them. Yeah. So you, did was, you put like a curated selection of games? No, I just like it, just whatever. I put like the custom firmware on it or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But I'm saying, did you I, load like complete ROM sets on there or? Yes. Oh wow. All right. Yeah. I mean, just like a US ROM sets. Yeah. Uh, for each one, because you can't on that one specifically, you can't put stuff in folders. Oh, I see. At least not yet. So I just went through and I put everything on there. I said, I want each of you guys to play five games on here for more than 15 minutes. And then I want you to tell me about them afterwards. Yeah. Well, how's that been going? Like they find any, like what, um, what have been their well, jams? I mean, they wrote down so some far. stuff and you know, like it's just, it's cool because like they'll pull it out and they'll be like, Oh, I'm going to play this. And, uh, like when we were driving back from my in-laws the other day, um, my son's like iPad ran out of battery. So he busted it out and he's like, I'm, he's like, I'm going to play Bob. You know the EA. Oh yeah, the Genesis game. game. That's not yeah, a bad. B-O- it's not B-O-B. great, but it's not bad. I know, but he's like, oh, I was like, oh okay, that's the one with the yellow robot. He's like, oh yeah, yeah, and yeah. <laughs> like I just have, you know, like this stupid, like infinite like knowledge of just like random stuff like that. Yeah. So he can just say, oh, you know, I'm gonna play this, and I will know what he's gonna play. Yeah. Uh, and he's like, you know, he liked it. You know, he played it for like. Like a good like thirty minutes, yeah, of the, of the car car ride. Yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, so yeah. the, his uh, his question, like I said, unrelated. I didn't realize. Uh, decent question though. Uh, here's my question for you: At what point does an artist's bad behavior start to affect your enjoyment of their work? Is there anyone you can think of that you give a free pass to, or just flat out ignore their bad behavior because you like their music, movies, games, writing, or sports balling? Oh, see, this this is this is a tough question, really. Uh, like, can you separate the art from the artist? Yeah. And um, you know, I like I feel like I do okay with it because if something like really annoys me, I like I just don't spend a lot of time like looking what people are getting into. Yeah. I guess uh, as much as I used to, but there was a point where. Um, a lot of people like if they just do like crummy things and like now I'm going to like struggle to think of like any examples yeah um, but I, I can't think of any situations where uh, I have stopped enjoying like anybody's stuff because of their crappy behavior um, like like musicians yeah. or movie stars like you know game v- developers I mean I've I've stopped like where I've stopped enjoying like their previous stuff. Yeah. But then it well a lot of times when, you know, like they're they're kind of crappy uh and they have something new coming out, chances are like I'm probably not going to chances are I'm probably not going to like buy it. Yeah. Like right out of the gate or even think about it. Like I just put it out of my mind. It's not like I have don't have a billion other things to enjoy. Yeah. I mean, I would I can't think of too many examples, but I would just say, like, you know, I could never look at, like, Bill Cosby the same way again. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, I mean, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure I could even go back and, and enjoy as much. I mean, I love the Cosby you won't show. find yourself, like, going back. Like, I won't, like, he's 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 a great example because I will never go back. Yeah. Uh, And, like, watch this stuff. Yeah. And think about it. But, I mean, but, that's more like, it's not like Bill Cosby's coming out with new stuff, but. I guess an example that would be more closely aligned with the question, like I used to love watching uh, Louis C.K.'s show. Was it just called right. Louis? Mm-hmm. And I mean, I watched his stand up too. Some of the stand up I thought was kind of cringy personally, but like I thought, I always thought that show was great. 
And ever mm-hmm. since, you know, he got in trouble for, you know, or got me too for doing what he was doing, I just have no yeah. interest. Like, oh, a new Louis C.K. special came out. I'm like, yeah, I'm probably not going to not going to watch that it, in most it. situations like, like when people get in trouble or get called out for stuff they go like far in the other direction yeah you know and like saying like oh i'm getting persecuted for this and this and this and like the uh you know it and that just it just makes them look worse and worse in the it, but you know bill, bill cosby is a good example um you know like i i have fond memories of watching the um his comedy special like the bill cosby himself yeah and you know we did the whole thing where he goes to the dentist in that and he gets like the novocaine and he's like oh, saying yeah, like yeah. my lip is on the floor yeah like stuff like that like i will think about that and i'll be like oh it's like it's still like it's it's funny to me but i like you know i'm not going to bring it up yeah except for right now yeah uh, but i'm not going to go out and you know like look at anything like like i have no idea like no interest in rewatching this stuff. Yeah. I mean, or, I don't know. I feel like for me, that's the saddest example I can think of. Cause like to me, yeah, I mean, I feel like, you know, I practically grew up watching the Cosby show and like Bill Cosby yeah. was like, Ameri- most people our age, he was like America's sure. dad, you know? Yeah. yeah. And you know, you talk about, you know, I'm just saying like with someone like, like Louis CK, like, were you really shocked? Really? Like, I, I wasn't shocked. Like, oh, wow, really? Or Harvey Weinstein? It's just not shocking. Mm-hmm. You know, I felt like with Bill Cosby, it, it was shocking. Yeah. You know? But for that, the longest time, it was like this open. Well, apparently, it was like right? Because it was secret. Wasn't it like Hannibal Burris was the one that kind of like finally yeah. said it out loud? But I guess it was one of those things where everybody, everybody in the business, you know, knew about it. Right. But, and I guess the only other example I could really think of where it's not like I'm not. It's not like I don't still maybe consume some of this person's, you know, content or you want to call it, but like it it's it got pretty hard to watch like anything Tom Cruise did. You know, as somebody that loved Tom Cruise growing up, mm-hmm. you know, once he really went off the deep end. You know, I'm not right. saying I'm well, not I mean, like you know, I haven't seen Maverick yet, but I want to, you know, and like yeah. I think I've seen every Mission Impossible movie, so I'm saying it's not like I didn't already know that he was a little bit nutso, you know, but like but I mean, he still does like, you know, it still treats some people, I guess, pretty badly. Yeah, um, but I'm saying I don't watch as much of his stuff as I might otherwise. Yeah, you know, it has to hit some kind of certain threshold where I'm like, well, you know, Tom Cruise is not my favorite, but I'm I'm not going to miss this. Where it like proactively ruins like their previous body of work. Yeah, um, it's not. I mean, it's not that bad. But I don't. Know, I'm trying to think. I mean, you know, I feel like music is my big thing. I'm trying to think of an example. In, in where somebody is just like turns know, out to be a real well it's just so much of the music I listen to is not new right and so it's like if I found out right. today that like oh yeah the lead singer of Def Leppard turns out he was like you know a rapist or something like well I don't mm-hmm. I don't listen to new Def right. Leppard you know what I'm saying like I yeah I don't know well I mean you look at like I guess Billy Corgan would be a good example because like he's like turned into real not that he was like not a jerk before but he's like, you know, was on info wars and like is all crazy oh, about I, stuff. I didn't and even, uh I didn't even know like, about that. But it, it like it doesn't retroactively make, you know, uh Gish Siamese Dream and yeah. Melancholy yeah. and like Machina like bad. I leave out a door because I never really cared for a door anyways. Yeah. But um like it just it makes me have zero interest in listening to like anything yeah. new. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know, um, he mentions, you know, he mentions athletes and I'll say that for me, like if, if, you know, if we have like a, you know, if there's an, uh, an athlete on, you know, like the giants, or the 49ers or whatever, and it turns out they have like, you know, massive, you know, what they call character issues, you know, like breaking the law. Like I don't have any loyalty to, you know, get that person off the team is how I feel. I don't care who it is, you know? Yeah. So, uh, when it's, when they're part of a big team. Uh, well, because you're not being like a team easier. player. If that's what you're doing in your spare time is, you know, whatever that's, you know, like I said, breaking the law or doing whatever else, then yeah, that's bad for the team. I mean, team, a lot of times I think know? about that stuff. Like, I think about, like, bad behavior and doing all that stuff. And I'm just like, man, it just seems like so much, 
<laughs> so like it's it would t- take like a, so much effort to be like such a like a shitty person. Oh yeah. You know, like I, I mean. Well, like, I remember like, I, I be, said, like, left alone. I said this to my this, wife like, not that long ago, but, you know, you know, I like to get on Reddit, you know, and, and my favorite Reddit or my favorite subreddit on Reddit is called best of Reddit or updates. Mm-hmm. And it's basically like, you know, somebody went and posted in like relationship advice or am I the asshole or, or one of those right. subreddits and had some issue they talked about. And then later they came back and posted updates. So you can read it and it's sort of like this whole story, you know. And for right. sure, if you read that, like at least half of those things are fake. But I mean, right. I don't care. It's all as far as none of it is. None of it is like personal knowledge of mine. So it's like they could all be fake. Like none of them could be fake. If I was entertained reading them, then whatever. But, you know, one of the biggest things that I read about is like infidelity, you know, where somebody had like a second family or they, you know, they just found out their husband's been cheating on them with the same person for like five years you know, stuff like mm-hmm. that. And like I always read that kind of stuff, and I'm just you know, maybe it's because I have an anxiety problem, and that makes it worse. <laughs> but I cannot imagine even trying to cheat on my wife. Like just, like it just it, first it would of all, take all so that much effort, effort. Yeah, all the effort, and then just the constant fear of getting caught. Like I don't want to cheat on my wife. I'm saying even if I kind of was a you know if my morals were a little bit weaker and. I wanted to or had an opportunity to just 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 for logistical reasons alone I would never do it to say <laughs> I, nothing I, of the I, fact that I have you know I I'm loyal to my wife. Right. It just it just sounds like so much effort to live your life to hide that. Hide right. that. When yeah. you have like everything else to like think about you know it just it just seems like you know I I I'm I'm just too I'm too lazy. Right, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, because right. it just it seems like so much effort, and I don't even want to like. I'd rather just I'd rather spend my time and mental effort like doing things that you know, like that I that yeah, that I enjoy. Yeah, being productive or being creative or yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. Well, there you. I don't know. That's. Kind of an answer, I guess. <laughs> it's like um, a, it's like a, a winding road, but I think that's that's the point, right? Yeah. All right. Uh, you have any uh, closing uh, thoughts, topics? Quick. Uh, no, I mean no, no deep thoughts or anything like that. People should send us more emails so that we can keep this going. Yes. And uh, you know, email us at uh, here's here's my podcast at gmail dot com. Well, thank you for remembering the and, email address. And uh I mean you can try to follow us on Twitter, although I don't think we even use the Twitter. No. No. I'm, anymore. I'm putting myself on a super and Twitter and NPR diet, so. are no longer I don't I don't want to use Twitter that it does not have NPR and PBS on it. Yeah. I mean I'll I post links. I'm, I'm that's my I'm I'm trying. I, I feel like I've said this before and I didn't do a good job of sticking to it. I'm just Twitter is going to exist so that I can post links to the show. Yeah. And frankly, I I would delete my Twitter account, except that if I did, somebody else would probably take my name and make a fake classic gaming quarterly Twitter account. Yes. So I have exactly. to I have to kind of keep it. I felt the same way about Facebook. I don't really want to have Facebook anymore, but you know, I feel like you have Jeez, to. I keep on hitting this thing. Good lord! I feel like you have to to, to sort of maintain the claim to your online identity yes yeah for better or worse that's that's what you got to do yeah all right well that's going to do it for episode 26 i still can't think of anything good for the number 26 yeah we're, uh, we're trucking along towards that 30 though you know, what happens at 30 nothing you know oh, okay. like oh you know like i love thinking about how when I was like 20 is like, oh my God, I can't even imagine what it's like to be 30. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. Podcast has a, it's interesting you say that just because, you know, this happened to me the other day, you know, I don't know. I know, I know we need to end the show, but this, this will be my final thought to end the show on, I guess, is, uh, you know, the other day I was driving in my car and I needed to change a CD and uh, the CD I ended up putting in, I don't know, just at that time that sounded like, oh, this is, this sounds good. 
is I put in uh, X and Y from Coldplay. Oh, okay. That's the one with, um, it's like the blue cover with like the yeah. E.T. looking thing on it, right? Yes. Yes. That's like the last one of theirs that I even listened to. I think that's true of a, for a lot of people, yeah. Um, but anyway, it's just like, so I put that in, and it just like I got a little bit nostalgic because like I, it was like Christmas vacation of 2005. Uh, I had like two weeks off where I just stayed home. And I just remember like that's what I did for like that Christmas vacation is I stayed home, album. I listened to that album, and I played uh, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. For like for like two weeks, <laughs> and you listen to that. Uh, yeah, it's an odd combo. I own, that album I, instead of like the music in the game because the the game is like takes place in like 1993 or some four. Well, or something I, I mean, like I that. think I would do and both. Like, I mean, I think I listen to the game a lot, but I mean, maybe it wasn't like simultaneously. But I I listened to that album a lot during that vacation, and I played a lot of San Andreas. Interesting. And, but anyway, the point is, so I'm I'm doing that, and I'm thinking about like, like that was like 18 years ago, <laughs> right? But just because of my age, it's like it doesn't feel like 18 years ago. And so to me that, uh, you know, it's not like Coldplay music sounds old to me, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, because then that made me think of like, you know, my best friend when I was a kid, my best friend Jonathan, you know, his dad, pretty much any time he was at home, he was in his garage, like wrenching on his hot rod and and listening to like eight track tapes. Right. From when he was younger. And this this would have been yeah. like 1988. Right. Yeah. And so for me to listen to Coldplay now and get, you know, reminisce about, you know, oh, to be in my 20s again playing <laughs> PS2, that would have been the equivalent in 1988 of like him listening to an album that came out in like, you know, 1969, 1970. <laughs> right. Yeah. That, I don't That's, know. Just thinking about that blows my mind. Because because I always think like, oh man, that guy's like going through a midlife crisis or trying to relive his youth. But now at my age, I don't feel that way anymore. I feel more like like when you get old, stuff that was a long time ago, it just doesn't feel like it was a long time ago. Right. Like I right. don't feel yeah, like yeah, yeah. oh, I'm listening to like 20 year old music. To me, it's like Coldplay still seems very contemporary to me, even though it's well, not. It's like if Back to the Future came out now and he went 20 years into the past. Well, it was 30, it was 30 years in the past. Yeah. But oh, yeah, it would be oh, only 1993, yeah. which does that, I mean, yeah, we were in high school, but does it really seem that yeah, yeah. long ago compared to like 1955, what that felt like in 85? Right. No, yeah, yeah. but for us, we weren't even born yet and that seems like it was a different world. Yeah. So do like young people today, like do they think that the 90s seems like this... Going Long back to 93, and it like I I think like that would be awesome. Yeah, you think the people that were our age when that came out, they're like, oh, that would be awesome. Yeah. So I'm, what I'm saying yeah. is like instead of thinking that like you know now when I see some guy in his 50s listening to like the Eagles and you know Credence and you know whatever else Jackson Brown, you know I don't mm. think anymore like oh wow that guy's really like you know, just trying to relive his past. It's, it's, I think it's more of like the older you get and the faster your perception of like the passage of time is, it's just like to you that stuff doesn't seem old. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's now, a subtle I, I distinction. Get it. I, I, I think it didn't, like that, something like that happened with the Wonder Years also. Like if the Wonder Years, you know, like was made now, it would be like in... Well, because that was only 20 years, wasn't it? The Wonder yeah, Years. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, if it was made now. Imagine if like the Wonder Years. I mean, even though they, they have remade the Wonder Years, but it still takes place during that same time period. It still takes place like in the '60s or whatever. Right. And, but I mean, if you did that time difference from when that came out, yeah. you know, just the idea of wasn't you know, it? It was 20, Was it twenty years? It was twenty. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like the '60s. Yeah. It was the late '60s, and the that movie that or that show started in the late '80s. So yeah. So yeah, yeah. now you'd be making something that started in like 2003. Yeah, which is so stupid. I mean, yeah, think it is. But it, to me, it's just more like if I think of like what the world was like in 2003, like in my mind, it just wasn't that different. But if you really sit down and start thinking about it, it actually was quite a bit different. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right. That's, but, that's know, my we closing. We didn't, have, we didn't have a perspective, I guess, on the world to like really. Yeah, I guess so. Anyway, that. that was my closing thought for the show. <laughs> Coldplay, X and Y. X and Y. What, what, what's like, is that, is that the one fix, fix You on it? Yes. That's the only well, song I don't that care I know. for that song. But that, that one song. had like uh, Square One's good song. There's actually only like four songs in that album I really like. That's, that yeah. album's kind of like all over the place. But like Square One's good, White Shadows, Talk, which has the, the hook from a Kraftwerk song. Mm-hmm. Um, the one about, was it Speed of Sound or whatever? The Birds Go Flying at the Speed of Sound? I forgot the name of the song. Oh, yeah. That was like the lead, lead single off yeah. of it, I think. And then there's, a, there's like an acoustic song like at the end like maybe the second to last song that doesn't mm-hmm. really sound like a Coldplay song but is really good but yeah. I don't know the name I don't even know how it goes <laughs> I just remember thinking that that was a really good song so yeah yeah I you know I'm not into uh greatest hits compilations like I don't like like just listen to the album dude but like yeah Coldplay is a prime example like I you could just give me a Coldplay greatest hit CD and I'd be like okay I'm covered for Coldplay yes you know? I agree like because give me give me no the songs I like just mentioned plus like that. clocks and the scientist, yeah, and parachutes uh, after the fir- after their first one is that parachute? Yeah, or, yeah, uh, that the, one. the album was parachute, right? Yes, the album was the, parachutes. Uh, um, then. Yeah, what's the not the uh, yellow and um, oh yeah, that one's I don't like that song that much, but you could put it on there. I mean, it, it would have to be on whatever there. that that first song is on there. Yeah, it was in that movie Garden State. And then I mean, there was another song that came out with like after X and Y that was pretty good. But I can't remember how it goes. But I just remember it, it was on the radio. Was, a what lot. was there? What was there one after that? It was like "Live in La Vida Loca," right? Is that what it was? That's Ricky Martin. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what was the name of their album that came out after that? It's like like oh, you're like right. It had like Vita, Vita something. It had the word Vita. It was, it was, in it. You're yeah. correct. It was. It wasn't "Live in La Vida Loca," but no. I mean, it may as well have been. Yeah, I don't know, but <laughs> anyway. All right. Just you know, what? we're give, giving Coldplay a little ribbing. On the way out, a little bit. out the door today. A bit. Uh, all right, that's it for episode twenty-six. Uh, thanks for listening. Have a good week. We'll see you next time. <laughs>